Jason with Parallel Reality coming back with you here today. And I thought this would be a very interesting thing to report on. So I'm recording this on the 22nd and saw this pop up today and I'm going to probably put it out on the 23rd. Um, but for anybody that uh, was hoping that Fox would be your, your one saving grace from woke ideology, well... Hate to break it to you, but that is not going to be the case. So this article is from the Daily Signal. I've seen it getting picked up kind of everywhere. Tim Pool, in fact, I just finished listening to his video about this exact same thing. Um, thought I might actually beat him to the punch for something, but here it is anyway. The article is Leaked Policy Exposes Fox News Stances on Woke Ideology, and, and it's from, again, uh, today, May 22nd. So, scrolling down. It says, Fox News employees are allowed to use bathrooms that align with their gender identity rather than their biological sex and permitted to dress in alignment with their preferred gender. They must also be addressed by their preferred name and pronouns in the workplace. And what Tim Poole said about this is that they're in New York and apparently this is uh, a statewide law. So I guess they don't really have a choice about this. But at the same time, like, uh, I think the the woman who got it, what's her name here, the Mary Margaret Olahan, like she actually got, oops, I hit end by accident, she actually got a copy of like an email about this, so it's obviously a policy that they're trying to push, and it's not just something where it's like, well, the state has a law about it, so we have to do it. They're actually trying to push this on their employees, so remember, these are supposed conservatives, so there's that. So let's keep going with the article and see what it says. It says, these are just a few of the policies outlined in the company handbook, dated January 2021, a copy of which was shared with the Daily Signal. Oh, there we go. So it was from the handbook, not an email, so my mistake there. So Fox also offers to help employees come up with work uh, with a workplace transition plan to ease their gender transition at work. You know, because that's more important than reporting the news. So the revelations come amid conservative consternation at Fox Digital's use of activist language like gender-affirming care and stories on its website, as well as the site's consistent use of female pronouns for biological males like TikTok celebrity. And I'm not going to say the person's name, but you know who it is, and you can see it right here because I think I've heard YouTube starts de demonetizing channels over that or, like banning your videos and even though i'm not monetized yet i'm not going to take the risk that they're just going to wipe this video clean from their website because of this person's particular name um so uh we'll go let's we'll take a step back here it says um so as well as the site's consistent use of female pronouns for biological males like you know who and swimmer leah thomas who was formerly known as will thomas Fox also drew strong backlash for a June 2022 on-air segment praising a child's gender transition as an inspiration to others. I remember that. Yeah, that was kind of weird. You're seeing a conservative network suddenly put out like a, you know, a hit that says you know, with all this stuff, the child uh, gender transition, and it's like, wait, what? <laughs> what are we doing here? So that segment briefly depicted California State Senator Scott Weiner, a far left, far left is too kind for that guy. That guy, that guy is like, if there's an actual end to leftism he's at the very end that's how far left this guy is he he is i saw an article about this dude that uh, i think he was named like the most destructive uh force in like uh in politics or something like that um because this guy he's the dude oh i think it's actually gonna say it right now let me go back here it says he's a far left democrat who led the move to soften sex offender registry requirements for sodomy with minors and highlighted the activist claim that a child might commit suicide if he or she is not permitted transition that wasn't even what i was going to bring up and that's just the beginning of this guy this guy um he was the dude that in california if you remember that they uh, got rid of the require uh, there was some sort of law that said like if you um, had HIV or AIDS and you did the deed with somebody that you could get in trouble for that, which kind of makes sense. You're passing along a fatal disease to somebody and he's the, the guy that's responsible for getting that law revoked. So this guy is just awful. So just, just an FYI about him. It's that guy's name and it's just like, Oh my God. Um, so, uh, we're going to go ahead and skip past that embedded tweet. Cause it's just about that child gender transition uh, comment from before. So it says the Daily Signal talked to current and former Fox employees who requested anonymity to speak candidly about the company. Quote, they want you to think that uh, d think it's this place that supports traditionally conservative values, a former producer told Tucker Carlson tonight, uh, for Tucker Carlson tonight, told the Daily Signal. But in reality, they're pushing this nonsense behind the scenes. 
Carlson's show was canceled April 24th, days after he delivered a viral speech at the Heritage Foundation's 50th anniversary gala. Fox News Media has not given a reason, simply stating that the two part, parties agreed at two part ways. A source who still works at Fox News, Fox News told The Daily Signal that after Carlson's show was canceled in April, producers for the new 8 p.m. Fox News Tonight program were told not to bash that same person from before it starts with an m first name is dylan i'll just say that much now you know who i'm talking about so that directive came from high level executives the source said it says fox news did not respond to the daily signals multiple requests for comment under the category gender transition fox's employee handbook promises that the company is dedicated to expanding and strengthening efforts to sustain a more inclusive work environment god i hate that language because my company has that too <laughs> um like it, it doesn't really mean anything. It's just activist language. Um, it says the Fox employee handbook is posted on Workday, where employees can see company guidelines or policies. A former employee told the Daily Signal. Employees who are transitioning their gender have the right to be open about their transition if they so choose, and to work in an environment free of harassment, discrimination, or retaliation, and without fear of consequences or transphobia for living openly. Sure, yeah. I mean, if you're over 18, do what the hell you're going to do with yourself. That's how I feel about it. Like, okay, fine, whatever. I mean, but it's like, and no one should be, you know, do like making anyone feel uncomfortable. Anyone of any stripe doesn't matter. So it's like it's one of those things like I don't know why this needs to be spelled out like you should just kind of know not to do that but okay and the people that are usually open about their transition are people that like uh, that you see that are just like like the Dylan person that we mentioned before um, as opposed to someone that's just like yeah I'm telling the people that need to know because obviously I'm gonna look different like for example I and this is not an apples to apples comparison here necessarily but i've mentioned in other videos that i had gastric bypass surgery almost geez five years ago at this point and i didn't want to tell anybody about it but i thought it would have been really weird if all of a sudden like you know my team at work was seeing me one day and i looked you know and i weighed about oh 100 pounds more than i did like just a couple months later they'd probably think something was really really wrong with me so i i i told them before the surgery and i was like i'm just telling you guys this because you know i'm gonna look really different very soon <clears throat> so like i i get that part of it but you know that was only because of that so i mean yeah i can understand someone you know that's transitioning being like i'm only telling like my immediate people or something because it's like hey you know obviously i'm gonna look different very soon but most of the people you seem to get are people that are like, hey, look at me, you know, like, you hoo and they have like a, a bullhorn, or they're doing the Daffy Duck thing of banging the bass drum, you know, around, or something like that. It's, yeah, so how about we just let them live in peace? How's that? So back to the article, it says, Citing the Human Rights Campaign, one of the most prominent LGBTQ organizations in the country, the Fox Handbook defines a slew of LGBTQ terms, including cisgender, gender expression, gender fluid, gender identity, gender nonconforming, gender transition, LGBTQ, non-binary, and transgender. <sighs> All right. For the past several years, Fox received a perfect score on the Human Rights Campaign, which is an extreme far-left organization, their Corporate Quality Index, the nation's foremost benchmarking survey and report measuring corporate policies and practices related to LGBTQ workplace equality. So it's basically, if you don't do this, we're going to say that you're bad, and th so that's what Fox is doing it for, you know, because they want to be on the good side of this extreme far-left organization. Like, why? Why don't you just do what you're going to do? <laughs> so the former Fox employees... A former Fox News employee told the Daily Signal that the company frequently mentions this perfect score in employee training materials. Yes, because some organization that's on the complete opposite end of the political spectrum from us, we care about what they think. Okay. It says Fox News devotes hours of programming to attacking woke companies. But ironically, Fox is as woke as the rest of them, another former Fox News employee told the Daily Signal, emphasizing that Fox viewers would be astonished to find out what the company is like. Yeah, and I think we're finding that out because of this article, aren't we? Um, continuing on, says Fox's policies appear to be aligned with the legal requirements in New York City, where the company is headquartered, and that's what I said before, as well as California, where a large number of his employees work. Okay, well, that too. Says the, city, the New York City human rights law requires employers to use the name, pronouns, and title with which a person identifies, regardless of their biological sex. It is a violation of the NYCHRL to intentionally or repeatedly refuse to use a person's preferred name, pronouns, or title. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start referring to myself. If I go to New York, I'm going to start calling myself um, 
the Supreme Commander of the Milky Way Galaxy, and my pronouns are now super, just Supreme Commander, okay? And if someone doesn't call me that, then, you know, there's going to be problems, I'm guessing. We'll see how well that goes. Okay, because that's how I feel at, at that particular moment, just when I step into New York or even California. I just feel like I'm the Supreme Commander of the Milky Way Galaxy, and that's what I should be called and referred to as. So let's let's go ahead and keep running down this path. So article goes on. says, additionally, the New York City law requires that people be permitted to use single gender facilities such as restrooms or locker rooms that most closely align with their gender, regardless of their gender expression, sex assigned at birth, anatomy, medical history, or the sex or gender indicated on their identification. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I could see where there might be some issues with that. But at the same time, what Tim Pool said in his video, and I agree with him on this, is like, you're not going to have someone that looks like Buck Angel going into a woman's washroom, even though Buck Angel is a biological woman. You look at Buck Angel, and there's no way in hell you'd think Buck Angel was actually a woman. There's just not a chance. Same thing with Blair White in the other direction. Blair White is a biological male. Uh, and you wouldn't, if Blair White was going to go into a men's washroom, you'd probably be like, you, wait, what? Like, this is strange. Okay. So, like, I understand if, like, you're putting in all the work to look a particular way, you know, and you look like the opposite sex, then, yeah, fine, go ahead and use that particular bathroom. But if you're just one of these folks out there that's just like, I've colored my hair differently today, and now I identify as a woman... So I'm going to use a woman's washroom? Yeah, I'm sorry. That that doesn't fly. Okay? And you can't just go, today I'm a woman. And then walk in there. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that sort of stuff. So, article continues. If a biological woman objects to sharing a bathroom with a trans-identifying man, her objection will not be considered a lawful reason to deny access to the trans-identifying individual. It says, in those circumstances, a covered entity may offer alternatives for the individual expressing discomfort by, for example, providing a single occupancy restroom to change in. Yes, because it's on the other people, on the people who are offended, that they're the ones that have to make all the adjustments, not the person who's intentionally, uh, you know, putting themselves... Uh, you know, in the situation. Okay, sure. It says the law also sp specifically states that it is unlawful to require a trans identifying person to use a single occupancy restroom because they are transgender, non binary, or gender non conforming. New York also outlines the workplace transition plan mentioned in the Fox Handbook. California's Fair Employment and Housing Council adopted new regulations in 2017 pertaining to trans-identifying employees. These regulations similarly include an employee's bathroom use, transitioning, dress, preferred name, and pronouns. So, for example, on bathroom use, the regulations state, quote, employers must or employers shall permit employees to use facilities that correspond to the employee's gender identity or gender expression, regardless of the employee's assigned sex at birth. Okay, stop with that nonsense. There's no assigning sex at birth. Doctors can tell when you're in the womb what you are. That's it. It's not like you come out as some amorphous blob, but they're like, well, I don't, yeah, I, I can't tell, doctor. How about you? No, I can't tell either. So let's go ahead and let's just make this one a male. Okay, that, that's not what happens. Okay, and that's what that language seems to say. It's just, we know what you were in the womb. Okay, you either got a dork or you don't. You got one, you're a male. You don't, you're a, you're female. There, we're done. I, I solved it. Okay, there's nothing else to do with that. Okay, so stop using that stupid language. Article continues, it says, and on names and pronouns, the regulations give individuals a means to take action against their employer. If, and quote, if an employee requests to be identified with a preferred gender name and or pronoun, including gender neutral pronouns, an employer or other covered entity who fails to abide by the employer's stated preference may be liable. For what? I mean, it's like being call someone calling you a different name by accident. I mean, I've been call I've been mixed up with other people before, and they've tried to call me something, and it's not like I'm, like I turn into a puddle of tears at that. It's just like, uh, okay, I'm not that person, and I move on. I've been called a lot worse than that too, and here I am today. It doesn't hurt because they're just words, okay. And if someone's calling you, you know, Mike, which is your real name as opposed to Barbara or something like get over it okay trust me you'll be okay okay i mean just jesus age anyway as employees who are attempting transitions are encouraged to inform and educate their co-workers about their experience according to the fox policy obtained by the daily signal which emphasizes that only transitioning employees may disclose that they are trying to change their biology and anyone who might know about their colleagues gender transition must respect that person's right to privacy of course they should respect the right to privacy as long as that person is you know basically saying like let's 
keep this on the DL or just being like, I'm only telling you guys. But if they're like out and just being like, yeah, I'm doing this. Like, well, they don't respect their own right to privacy. So why the hell should I? <laughs> Says Fox's handbook notes that the man or woman attempting to transition may find the experience stressful and trying and states that with advanced preparation, the road for someone to be able to express their true self can be made smoother. Their true self. Uh, okay. Yeah. This Fox also offers to help employees come up with a workplace gender transition plan. You know, because they because that's all we have to do now. We, we're, we're Fox News. We're not going to report on the news. You guys have other more important things to do, Fox. It says, during the initial and any subsequent meetings, you and the company should develop and maintain a workplace transition plan, the handbook says. This plan will outline the steps that need to be taken to ensure a, su a successful transition at work. Those steps include when employees want to start using a different bathroom aligning with their gender identity and assuming a new gender identity at work. It also provides employees with time off for treatment, possibly hormonal treatments like testosterone and estrogen, or medical procedures such as the removal of breasts or testicles, facial feminization or masculization, masculiz is it masculinization or masculization? It says masculization. Okay, whatever. Or the creation of fake genitalia. <sighs> All right. Additionally, Fox, Fox and the employee would plan out the manner in which and to what extent coworkers and non-employees in the workplace will be made aware of your transition. And when the company... And when the company will change the employee's name or make other administrative or personnel changes. As Fox employees can go by their preferred name and pronouns, the handbook states, at least to the extent possible. What does that mean? <laughs> to the extent possible. Okay. Like, either they do or they don't. Like, that's it. It says, but apparently for logistical reasons, until a transitioning employee gets a legal name change, their legal name, often refer referred to by LGBT LGBTQ advocates as a dead name must remain on company payroll, insurance, and personnel documents. It says the handbook explicitly states that any employee may access the restroom corresponding to their gender identity. <sighs> okay. If a transitioning employee expresses a desire for increased privacy, they will be provided access to a single occupancy restroom where available. The handbook says, however, no employee shall be required to use a single occupancy restroom if they do not wish to do so. The former Fox employee who spoke with the Daily Signal scathingly critiqued the network for running hours of programming attacking companies for having leftist policies. It says Fox is no different, the former employee said. It's a standard American mega corporation with all the same types of policies and employees as those other companies. So the Daily Signal sent Fox's corporate public relations staff detailed questions about the policy and the accusations from former employees last week. And as a publication, Fox did not respond. I'm not surprised about that. The handbook specifically acknowledges that individuals who are transitioning their gender will be encouraged or required by their healthcare practitioner to live full time in their impending gender role before gender reassignment surgery can be performed, which that makes sense. This is called real life experience or real life test, Fox knows Fox notes. Fox employees are told that they are permitted to express their gender in accordance with company dress code policies. Man, this article is long. All right, it says, when trans-identifying TikTok star Dylan, we'll just go with that, was first gaining prominence last year, producers for Tucker Carlson Tonight had to fight to be able to refer to Mulvaney with male pronouns in the show's Chirons. The former Tucker Carlson producer told The Daily Signal, and I think that's the correct decision, is to refer to him as him. And Carlson's team also fought to be able to host the Daily Wire's Matt Walsh on trans issues, the producer said, but the team was repeatedly met with resistance from Fox on this due to Walsh's frank condemnation of transgender excuse me, ideology. Oh, the article's almost over. How about that? I just complained about it, and it's done. So this may have also been due in part to Fox's view of the Daily Wire as a competitor, the former producer suggested. In a phone interview with the Daily Signal, Wall said he was aware of the alleged blacklisting and believes it began after he slammed Fox for the June 2022 segment praising a child's gender transition. I remember that as well when it happened. In fact, what I'd mentioned it earlier in the article, that was the first thing I thought of was Matt Walsh's uh, condemnation of it. So, so since then, Walsh appeared on Tucker Carlson tonight a few times, but he was aware that Carlson's team had to fight for those appearances. Fox's viewers think that Fox shares their values, Walsh said, and it's very clear that that's just not the case. Gender ideology is as far radical left as you can possibly go. True. They have embraced radical leftism in its most extreme form. Says there's no daylight at all between Fox News and MSNBC when it comes to gender, Walsh added, and I think that's something that Fox's viewers need to know. If it were up to me, Fox would get the Bud Light treatment. Well, it can be up to you. You guys can stop watching it. I know some people that probably will not doing that, or will not do that, but... Yeah, I think any company that does this, if you want to win this culture war that we're in, you got to gotta do it. You got to just be like, no, we're done. That's it. Turn it off. Okay, don't hate watch it. Just turn it off. Move on to something else. There are other options out there. You don't need to have the TV on. You don't need to be watching it. You can find the same information in other places. That's it. Say so anybody that goes against your ideology like this, make them pay. Simple as that. Anyway, 
What do you guys think about this? You know, leave your comments below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.